We're live, hanging out with David plus Dave. I'm Dave. I'm David. And we're hanging out tonight with Lynn Brueger, the development director of Kumac, the New Jersey's most pivotal food bank. Lynn Brueger, say hello. Hello. Pivotal. How we doing? Yeah. Lynn, Lynn <laughs> Brueger herself is pivotal to the food bank that is pivotal to feeding people in New Jersey. There's a lot of pivot, a lot of pivoting going on tonight. Wow. <laughs> I know. Before we get into Lynn and how special and wonderful and fantastic and basically perfect she is, David, why don't we talk to you and figure out who you are, what you do, and why you do what you do so well. Well, I'm pivoting. Yeah, see that? That's nice. I'm pivotal too. So, uh, my name is David Deutsch. Uh, I run a company called Synergy Social. Uh, we do social media strategy for clients who are frightened by Facebook, terrified of Twitter, and lost on LinkedIn. And uh, I was once run over by a giant pig. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Thank you. Oh, by the way, Lynn Brueger, everybody. <laughs> That's better. Yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking, Lynn Brueger. <laughs> that's, that's like the, uh, the anti-charity exactly. thing. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, thank Dave, you. Dave, Phil, who are you and, and why, why do we care? I mean, I care. Lynn cares. Why, why should the rest of the world care? The rest of the world should care because I'm the father of two young children. I'm the husband of one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you were supposed to save that for husband of one. Oh, okay. Then Sorry. Then you would do it. But children, fine, isn't the big deal. So I'm um, Dave <laughs> Phil. I am the... Lynn, please stop laughing. Oh, Lynn. I am the chief organizer guy of a company called You Choose. You can find us at myyouchoose.com. And I believe there may be some people watching us live tonight at myyouchoose.com. My, uh, you Choose runs a live benefits live concert organization we put together live benefit concerts for great causes and we've been working for a while this is our third year in a row in which we're working with Kumac which is uh, based in Patterson New Jersey and that's why we are here tonight we're talking with Lynn Brueger again who is the development director of Kumac based in Patterson New Jersey Lynn Brueger one more time Thank you. <laughs> yes yeah, so there we Lynn tell us Lynn uh, we know who you are. Do you guys hear that beeping? Yeah, someone's being. Sounds beeped. like someone's calling you. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if that's a. Is that a Skype thing? I don't know. It sounds like, it sounds like Google. It's a, I apologize, Lynn, that that's completely unprofessional. That somebody. So unprofessional. Um, it's what I've come to expect. Yeah, it's oh, exactly. Oh, she just. Ah! I know. Oh, so seriously, Miss Miss Fancy Pants, then why don't you uh, tell us who you are and why you do what you do and who you work with, what you do when you do, why you do what you do? Oh my goodness, how much wood can a woodchuck chuck? Um, <laughs> well, wait, 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 time out, time out. Um, I I did a quick hangout with Lynn earlier, and over her left shoulder, our oh I the right. There I was a picture the of Mariana Rivera, and that has been changed. And what is that bag hanging over the picture it's, of Mariana Rivera? It's the Kumac bag. Look at that. You can't that. really see it from there, but I, I was trying to give you a Kumac backdrop since I am at home and not at Kumac. Smart a rarity. Go, go, go back. Speak again. Don't Just ignore me. So, yeah, um, I'm the development director at Kumac. Uh, it is the largest feeding program in Passaic County, New Jersey. I can share with you that we just served 7,000 people in the first quarter of 2013, which is the first time we've ever served that many in the first quarter of a year. And considering the last three years, we've had record numbers. That just means it just keeps going up, um, which makes events like 80s Night all the more important to get people involved. Um, um, and helping us to, to feed people, to bring in the food, to make sure we have enough supplies to keep, um, you know, giving supplies out to people who come to our door in need. So, hold on, let's take a step back here. You served 7,000 people in the last yes. quarter. That's yes. an amazing thing that you've done. But all the economic indicators that I've read, we all the in the news, that the economy's turning around, we're out of the recession. We've been technically out of the recession for some time. Right. But need has never been higher. Right. Well, here's the thing. The people that we serve tend to be the first people that feel a recession and the last people to recover from it. Um, the majority of our clients are low-income families, so they're living on minimum wage. 
Um, but in communities, you know, we live in northern New Jersey. The cost of living around here is not conducive to a minimum wage income. Um, so they don't have safety nets. Their family members are in the same situation, you know, whereas other people might be able to turn to someone and have a couch to sleep on for a little while or somebody who can help them out. Our clients don't have that um, because they live in a community where everyone is in the same boat, where everybody is struggling to make ends mm -hmm. meet. And so it takes a lot longer for it to turn around. So you're, you're, you're hit with high cost of living, mm -hmm. um, st people not making enough money to make it. They probably piled on debt trying oh, to make it until now. Absolutely. So not only do they have not, not, not enough money to pay the bills now, but not enough money to pay the bills they just racked up so they can stay alive a year or two ago. Right, and you can throw on top of that um, our friends Irene and Sandy that have hit our communities mm. in really intense um, in the last two years. You know, I was out of power for two weeks. I know many, many people were affected in that way. Many people lost their homes. Patterson this year actually didn't get a lot of damage, but you can imagine when you're coming to a food pantry for food, what losing two weeks worth of food will do for you. So just that, even that loss of power, the inability to go to work, the fact that schools were closed and so parents had to stay home with their kids instead of going to work and take that time off, that two-week loss of income mm. is incrementally felt by yeah. folks that we yeah. serve. Piles up and piles up, and people just don't feel. There, it's I feel it must feel hopeless. Absolutely. And, and with no Absolutely. real prospects for a good, even people who've gotten education, doing all this stuff, they must just feel completely hopeless. Like, like, like what have I? What is this? What What is this? You know, what is this? <laughs> right. Absolutely, and that's. I mean, that is part of what we try to do at Kumac is to provide a sense of hope as well as help that at least they can get you know a basic need met so that whatever small income they do have can go toward paying the electric bill can keep them in their homes can keep them warm can keep them safe um, so that we can provide that one other piece of the pie you know helps to stretch the dollars a little further you know, Lynn, every every town seems to have a food bank or has a church that has a food bank like I know I live in Wayne New Jersey and I think I know of at least three or four smaller food. I guess I would call them food pantries. Pantries. Yeah, yep. here, and um, there are t obviously there are towns like Wayne all around New Jersey, and obviously all around the country. Right. For, for a food bank like Kumac, I guess, I guess how many how many of these little pantries are you, are you serving? And from a, not just from the seven thousand people who are going into your doors in right. a quarter. How about all the other food pantries and the people who are going into those? What kind of need are you sensing from them, and is that risen as well? Absolutely. Well, Kumak started the same way that many of those other small pantries you're talking about started. Um, in the late 70s, a lot of faith communities just started gathering food in a closet in their church so that they could have something there to provide to people. Um, the difference with Kumak is while we're still serving people directly, we have our pantry where we give out bagged groceries. We also have a 28,000 square foot facility where we are able to secure, transport, and distribute shared food resources. So right now we have about um, 60 other pantries throughout the county of Passaic, but also some in Bergen, Morris, um, Essex counties that we share food resources with. Things like massive corporate donations. You know, people think about how much food is wasted in this country all the time. Um, things like we might get a call that cereal boxes were printed upside down and so there's a tractor trailer load of cereal available but it's all or nothing you have to take the entire lot and so we have the capacity to be able to take that and to distribute it we have volunteers come in package it into smaller you know supplies and to get it out to the pantries that are serving people um, and anecdotally at least all of the pantries that we work with are reporting similar um, levels of need at this time so so god so like um who, who, who are these amazing people who are volunteering? Uh, uh, we have the most phenomenal groups of volunteers. We have um, a lot of United Methodist churches that work with us, school groups, corporate groups. Um, because we have the warehouse facility, we can have you know 20 people in at a time doing bagged groceries. So we have different corporate things that use it as team building activities. Um, just uh, amazing amounts of work. My husky wants to apparently be oh, in the program. Oh, that's your dog. Do you hear him? that sound? Yeah. Like David has something. <laughs> David says something. Off camera's face. Hey, Max. I go back and watch Dave's face. Like. <laughs> <laughs> 
It sounded, it sounded like this turned into a porno. Suddenly. It's awful. Oh, inappropriate. I know. Come on, Lynn. How could you? I, I knew it was I'm a trying to get up. There he is. There Look at we that go. Guy. He's pretty, huh? Max, oh come here. God. That's great. That was the funniest thing I think everyone in the <laughs> Was not, I knew it was a dog, but I just oh, here she is talking about. She's talking about feeding the world and feeding the hungry people. She's got this dog saying, "What about me?" The best is this dog never barks, never makes any noise. But right now I'm doing a, you know, webcam, and of course he's Aww. like, "Pay attention Hi. to me." Yeah. <laughs> Max has actually been to Kumak as well. He he's been a volunteer. He's come down for uh, you know, clean up the crumbs or something. So. Can you can you tear her down so we can see him? <laughs> yep. Oh, what a pretty fun. Good job. Come here, man. Sit. Sit. Down. Sit. <laughs> I want to make him sit virtual. Oh, wait, oh, sit. Yeah, a, a, a virtual uh, dog whisperer. He's he's mad because his brother, who you can't see either, that's his brother. Oh. Oh, nice. So there you go. Now you've met um, my furry friends. <laughs> I, I've got to rewatch this. Just to, <laughs> look like he, he was, it looked like he ate like I don't know, like two sour lemons or something. Like, the hell is that? that was awesome. All right, so um, we were talking about uh, the wonderful volunteers you had, and, yeah. and is that that's a Stephanie Ames thing, right? Yes, Stephanie is our volunteer coordinator, and Adrian is our assistant um, volunteer coordinator, and they work with groups. It's been so much, I mean, every day, basically, we have people coming in and out. But, I mean, that 7,000 people that we serve, you imagine each one of them goes home with multiple bags of food. Um, we have two guys working in the warehouse and two guys in the pantry. There's no way they could do all that without the incredible um, added assistance of all the volunteers that come through. So they which are... Brings us, which brings us to a real... tick. No, I'm sorry. I was going to say there's a, that you just bring up a huge point. You the fact that you have this you talk about this massive facility yes. and you have what two full-time people who run or is it four full-time people who run the uh inside, you know, the warehouse part. Um well, the warehouse technically has two full-time people um and then there are two drivers as well who work as warehouse assistants as well, um but they're part-time. Okay. Um, and then our referral off the pantry manager is only part time, as well as his assistant who does, you know, like the client data entry and everything. And the, and the reason why they're part time is because because we're a nonprofit with a limited budget. That's it. <laughs> yeah, That's we have at various times extended hours, or you know, done evening hours or weekend hours in order to accommodate client need. Um, but it's still always a part time basis. So we what? actually have some of the longer hours of the pantries. A lot of the smaller pantries that we serve are open maybe one day a week or even one day a month, and they're completely volunteer run, which is another reason that Kumak is able to help out because we can pick up food any day of the week and then just deliver it on the one day that they're there. So what you really need is uh, people that give you some uh, touching. Indeed. Um, financial oh. donations go such a huge way with us. I mean, yeah. you can go to the grocery store and buy food and bring it to us, and that's phenomenal. Um, but we can provide an entire meal for 57 cents. Wow. Um, because of we are members at the food bank, the Community Food Bank of New Jersey, down in Hillsdale, Hillside, New Jersey. Um, and we can get food for a very nominal handling charge through them. They also help facilitate a lot of the corporate connections that we have to get food. Um, so we're able to stretch even a dollar donation into two meals for a family. So I have a huge. I have a I have a colleague that run that created a, a website called YouGiveGoods.com. Yes. You know them. You know, we know Mike. Yeah. We okay. we uh, you give goods. We've had I think two food drives yeah. done for us through YouGiveGoods. Oh, great, great, excellent. Yeah. They them already good. Okay. They also sponsored um, the big uh, Kumak every November has a gala dinner. As all nonprofits have their big gala dinner, and YouGiveGoods.com, and uh, my good buddy there, Mike O'Connell, yes, uh, was a supporter of the last dinner in November. Great. Yeah, they're doing some great stuff. It really, they're, they help a lot with groups that aren't able to come down and do volunteering right on site. They can do a huge food drive off site. It comes to us pre-packaged, pre-sorted. I mean, it's wonderful. 
and good, good quality food, the type of like high protein items, tuna, peanut butter, things like that, that we you know are always in high demand. I'm, I'm glad. I just wanted to make sure you're connected with uh, with them. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Now uh, I'd like to um, go back to uh, October 29th of 2012 when Hurricane Sandy hit, and um, how did that expand Kumak's reach far beyond? where traditionally you guys have, have helped? Well, while Kumak's main focus has always been feeding people, we've always run a series of supplemental programs to kind of address the root causes of hunger. So we have a job training program on site. Um, we have an after school program for kids. And we have always had a thrift shop, which has kind of morphed into what we call our community closet. We provide um, clothing and household items when people lose their homes due to house fire. Um, or have to leave because of domestic violence or things like that. Um, but actually it started after Irene, we did really large scale disaster relief because Patterson was hit so incredibly hard. We had so many families displaced um, that we were able to warehouse you know, clothing and furniture and household items until people got into their new situation and then we could provide those things free of charge. When Irene hit, Kumak's facility itself actually never lost power. Uh, excuse me, when Sandy hit. Um, and so we were able to almost immediately start receiving resources and then deliver them back out. Um, somehow word of this got all the way up to Vermont. There was a radio station up in Vermont and a moving company that did a joint um, resource drive for us and brought down an entire moving truck worth of bedding and water and diapers. Um, and we've been making trips down to the Jersey Shore. We actually just went once this past week, and we're going once this week as well down to the Tom's River area to bring down resources. So we continue to um, house those things um, and to get them out to the communities that need them. The thing is, disaster relief, you know, it's a very long process. People, there are still people who are not into permanent housing um, and won't be for some time. And so we are able to kind of spread that out. When people need the resource, we can get it for them. Yeah, because I um, after Katrina, I was uh, working for the federal government, and I was dispatched down to uh, New Orleans like weeks afterwards. And uh, we were on a battleship for three days, the Poland Street, not a battleship, but a ship for oh. three days because there was no power in the whole city. Yep. And we yep. stayed in this boat for three days at the Poland Street Wharf. And then we spent another nine days after that. Uh, came back and spent another nine days. That was it was unbelievable. And I was looking around. Just the end. I mean, I mean, I saw a house on top of a truck. It's in the middle of the road. The house was yep. in the middle of the road. I mean, the the, the I didn't I haven't been down to the shore areas, but the sheer power of a hurricane is hard to really overstate. And it's not even the wind; it's the water. Mm -hmm. it, it, water just always finds a place to go. It does. And, and you know, I can't even imagine what you must be going through down there on on the shore all the time. It does, and I'm actually the opposite. I didn't see um, Katrina's aftermath in person, but I did go down the shore on a couple of the trips, um, both um, Kumak related and then just personal. To um, I had some friends who lost homes down there, and it is it, the pictures don't even do it justice. You know, when you see it in person, you you feel the weight of what people are going through. Um, Gone. I mean, it's like yeah. you know, those houses. And there, here's some here's some firewood, <laughs> where yep, these yep. big beautiful houses used to be. There's a pile of wood. Yep. And you know, it's like it's it's jarring. And then you smell it, and you see it, and you talk to the people. There's no comparison. There's absolutely no comparison. No. No. So I mean, Kumak, what we you know we're doing a small part of that relief just by getting resources where they need to be. Um, but we're happy to do it. Dave. Okay. Yeah, let, let's switch gears a little bit because, okay, so we understand now, especially for people watching this who have never heard of Kumak, I think they understand who Kumak is, where you, uh, where your sort of geographic area lies, which is pretty much anywhere the need is at the, and you can fill that. Let's talk about, because uh, a lot of times when David and I do these hangouts on Monday nights, it's, it's business oriented and we talk about how companies and, and startups and, and People sort of have their business plan and how they make money. Talk about Kumak specifically. You're a nonprofit. How do you guys generate revenue? How does money come in? What are the various sources and what do you do in order to um, make the operation run so that you can feed, feed the mouths that need it? 
Um, question. Well, we do a lot of things. One of them is the 80s night program that we've been talking about, but fundraising events in general um, are twofold for us. Not only does it bring in money, but it also just helps to let people know what CUMAC is. Um, we were blessed with this name of CUMAC, the Center of United Methodist Age of the Community. It's an acronym um, that doesn't really say what we do. And so the idea the ability to get in front of people and to share our story and to share the story of our um, clients that we serve is really valuable. We do that through events. Um, but other ways that we, you know, kind of bring the resources that we need to do are through grant writing. Um, we get foundation and corporate and even sometimes some government grant money. Um, we have a tremendous network of individuals who support us through donations. Uh, right now, actually, we're in the midst of, we're at the tail end of something called the Feinstein Challenge. Um, there's a gentleman named Alan Feinstein who donates a million dollars of his own money every year to um, combat hunger. And he allows feeding programs throughout the country to kind of compete for a share of this by reporting what you're able to fundraise during the months of March and April. So anyone who makes a gift right now, um, you can do that on our website, kumekeko.org. Um, it will count toward the Feinstein challenge and so it's kind of augments that person's gift which is really cool we get a grant in the summertime that so they give something now it helps feed people and then we'll get something in the summer that helps feed people um, we also as I mentioned before the community closet our disaster relief program actually has two sides to it not only do we give things free of charge to anyone who's been in a disaster situation but we have a thrift shop right on site where we um, sell items in the community um, and that does two things. It offers some really quality items at an affordable price to help build self-sufficiency in the community. A lot of our clients will come for food and they walk next door because they want to be able to also purchase, you know, an outfit for their kids to go to school so that they can feel like they're really contributing um, to their own family, not just taking something from us but also supporting the mission themselves. Um, but the thrift shop brings in a significant amount of money that then goes right back into the feeding program. So it's kind of, it's a win-win all around. So yeah, grants, events, individuals, um, and the thrift shop income all added together um, bring in the support that we need. Um, and then we, we rely a lot on in-kind donations as well. People and corporations do massive food drives for us. Uh, there's one every year in October that the North Jersey Media Group um, sponsors um, and that brings in you know tons of food literally um, but we also get uh, in-kind donations from different stores and things in the area that we can turn around to services for our clients. And, and a couple of months ago something really bad happened. You want to talk about what happened uh, to your uh, the robbery? The break-in? Yeah. Uh, yeah we um, we had a break-in at our facility. Uh, we are right in downtown Patterson um, and actually the area we're in right near Passaic County Community College. So if you go there in the evening, there's not a whole lot going on. It's a very, it's not a residential area. It's very corporate. Um, and so somebody broke into the facility and stole all of our laptop computers that were still there. I fortunately had mine with me at home. Um, but five computers were stolen. It was a financial loss for us, um, but it was also, you know, it's obviously a severe security breach. Um, and so while insurance will cover the, the physical loss of the computers, it doesn't cover the staff time for all of our staff who got called down on the emergency call. We do have a security system. We have cameras and everything, um, but that you know, makes phone call. It calls the police, and it call, we have to pay for all of that. We had to pay to have the locks changed. So. What somebody probably got about two hundred and fifty dollars for on the street, you know, just sold them quickly. It was definitely an act of desperation. Um, likely somebody who's was addicted and needed to turn it around rather quickly. Um, will cost Kumak a few thousand dollars. So it was, um, and it was. It also cost Kumak. Our staff was really affected by it, not just by the inability to work for a few days, but just by that personal violation of knowing that somebody, you know, broke into the building where we're trying to provide services and, you know, stole something. And our clients, because word got out very quickly, our clients were devastated to know that somebody in the community would do that. Um, so that was heartwarming, you know, to how, how many people came in and were offering to help and see what they could do to help out, our clients included. Um, 
really helped us to right. bounce back the morale at least. Right. And and um, speaking of which, so the three thousand dollars in the end that it's gonna the three thousand dollar loss. Um, Kumak basically runs with this uh, equation of fifty dollars can feed a family of four for a week. Mm -hmm. Three thousand dollars equals sixty families of four that can't get fed for a week because they had to use those resources for this other stuff. That's so, I actually hadn't wow. made that translation in myself, but that's that's frightening. Yeah, it's two hundred forty people is sixty families of four. When you think about two hundred forty people yep. per week could have been fed for a week. Wait, wait. Hold on, one, one more time. So there's 240, 50, I'm, I, I suck at math. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I, carry the one, I don't know what you're doing, man. I'm, I'm $50 feeds a family of four for a week. So uh, six, 60 families, 60 times 50 is 3,000, and that's, uh, so 60 families of four. Just take my word for it, 60 yeah. families of four. <laughs> And 60 times 4 is 240, so 240 people. That doesn't include the dogs. <laughs> you that's a lot of people. We do <laughs> provide pet food when we have it. <laughs> See? That's, that's, that's amazing. That, yeah, wow. Jeez. That's, that's jarring. I actually, I mean, we hadn't even thought about it in that translation, and that's even more devastating when you think about it like that. Now, one thing, um, Lynn, uh, the timing of this... It yes. is such that um, there's a reason why specifically we're having you on tonight. Can you explain what's going on this coming Saturday, April 27th? Yes, yes. this coming Saturday will be Kumek's third annual 80s night, so 80s night 3.0. Um, and this year there will be two simultaneous concert events going on, one at Chatham United Methodist Church in Chatham, New Jersey, and one at the Red Bank United Methodist Church in Red Bank, New Jersey. Um, and the way it works is the 80s night. Um, it's all live, all 80s music that the people who are attending have requested the song. So they pay to attend, they pay to request a song. And not only are they paying to request a song, but they're paying to feed a family while they're there. So they're rocking out you know, our favorite 80s tunes. Um, and that is allowing Kumak to continue to feed people. So it is, it is our most fun event, I think. Um, the band is incredibly talented. <laughs> How about that MC? What's that? Is the MC any good? Uh, you know, he could use a little more energy. He's a little bit... Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Just what he needs yeah, yeah. is more energy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, right? I mean, someone needs to get him a Red Bull or something. <laughs> um, well, it, it's interesting because this year, what we t because Kumak... And it's with Sandy and with Irene and everything, because Kumak has expanded. This is, and I'm involved, if you haven't guessed by now, with this 80s night. The, uh, we, that's why we expanded the 80s night to be not just in Chatham and reach the Morris, um, Passaic, Sussex, Essex, Union County, New Jersey area. We also uh, went down to Red Bank, to the Red Bank Methodist Church, to reach Ocean County, Monmouth County, which is exactly where Danny hit very hard. So. Um, the whole idea is down in Red Bank, 80s music, uh, two bands are playing. There's a, a band called Shark Town that's performing, um, and there's another band that they never gave me their name, but uh, they're from the Middletown United Methodist Church. They're doing six songs. So you can get 20 plus songs down in Red Bank, all starting at 7 o'clock, um, and you pay 15 bucks to get. Actually, it's going to be at the door $20. So. Um, go in, but you're going to have a great two and a half hours of, of 80s fun down in Red Bank and then up in Chatham. We have everything. Ah, David, do you remember Valerie Paik from uh, three weeks ago? Pack. Valpac, sure. Va 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 sorry, Valpac. Val Lynn, three weeks ago, we had this uh, great woman named Valerie Pack on who is a belly dancer. Ooh. And she belly danced for us. She gave us a demonstration. She forced David and I at gunpoint to belly dance, which we shimmy. And I felt that I won the contest, but she felt bad, so she said it was a draw. No way, man! You won. I totally, <laughs> I kicked his belly, man. You, you, so, you, you out me. I did. You shimmy circles around me. I, I, I prepared. I was stretched. I was, I was a hundred percent. My, my mind was in. I had skin in the game, literally. Yeah, yeah, literally. 
So uh, Valerie uh, and three friends are going to appear at our 80s night in Chatham, and they are going to perform during three different songs that will are, that are to be, well, I know what they're going to be, but for the audience, they're going to be a little surprised at what's going on with the belly dancers. Very nice. And also in Chatham, there's an acoustic 80s dinner that starts at 6 o'clock, and there are three separate groups that are going to be, be performing acoustic 80s, and at 7 o'clock when the music starts. I didn't even know there were three groups during the acoustic hour. That's pretty cool. Yeah, chat representatives from Chatham, and Mama, so it's going to be cool. So, how does one attend one of these '80s nights? How does one buy tickets? How does one? What does one do? Parking? You know, how does all that work? You, you speak to me. You want me to? Okay. Well, you can go on our website or on the My You Choose website, um, and there are very clear links to purchase tickets ahead of time. You can do. Um, you know, the dinner and ticket, or just the ticket. Um, and I think there are directions to the individual churches listed on our website. I don't, Dave, do you have them up on YouTube? Yes. You could go okay. to yeah. com slash events, or just go to our homepage, myyouchoose.com. There's a huge logo for 80s Night 3.0. Click on that, and it'll take you, and you can choose which event you want to go to, and gives you directions there as well. And pricing for tickets. There's great parking in all of these places. There are great, downtown, very safe areas as well, very well lit, and it's a, they're family events as well. Awesome. Lynn, can you also bring up yes. Mohawks and Makeovers for Hunger? Yes. Um, okay, well, it started originally just the Mohawk idea, but the ladies were feeling left out, so this year it's Mohawks and Makeovers. Oh, sweet effects. Where's mine? I need bangs. Give me bangs. <laughs> um, Folks are getting makeovers and to look like they are back in the 80s, you know, because everybody looked phenomenal in the 80s. So who doesn't want to bring that back? Uh, we have a couple of people who have done it every year. There's actually the pastor of the Wayne United Methodist Church not only gets a mohawk, but I hear he goes to church the next day and preaches with it. So that's pretty sweet. Um, and they're getting sponsors to do this. And so that sponsorship money adds up. That's a huge, huge, huge portion of what the 80s night brings in. So if you're not able to join us for 80s night, still go to that website and check it out. And you can sponsor somebody who's going to be getting a mohawk or a makeover um, to look That's like it. that. <laughs> he looks good. He looks like he kind of looks like it's Devo. the gremlin with the mohawk, mm. with that green. Nothing? Speaker? Bunsen? No? Okay. It looks good. But, um, yeah, it's designed like a relay for life, for example, where you're getting people to pledge to support you. I'm getting a mohawk on this coming Saturday, and I'll, I'll, I'll plug Public public Image Limited Salon, which is at 1055 Hamburg Turnpike in Wayne, New Jersey, 07470. But they perform all the mohawks and makeovers for everybody this year. And uh, I also want to give a shout out to a guy named Adam Platt who on his own this year through going to friends at work and friends on Facebook and everybody he knows. He's raised, he, he sent me a total today. I will tell you what his total was. His total, up to. here we go, it is $1,138.96. And people did that, Lynn, you're gonna love this. He sent me another text, he said, that's 22 families of four or 119 meals, or three meals a day for those families. That's phenomenal. So that's, that's 22 families of four for a week because he's going to get a mohawk. How awesome is that, Adam Platt? That's great. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, yeah that's great. Um, Lynn, Lynn, do you mind if I give a shout out to the other sponsors of the night while we're here? Of course not. We love our sponsors. Because we we're actually we're, we're getting close to the end. We're winding down. But you can see here I'm wearing my College Hunks Hauling Junk. Gretchen, do you see that? Yeah. College Steve. Hunk Hauling Junk. We're actually going to perform a song for them at the event in Chatham to support their sponsorship, the song Physical by Olivia and john because College Hunks Hauling Junk is very physical. Sweet. Steve Manko. Yes, Steve. Our, we've uh, we've talked to Steve Bianco. We know him, who runs the North Jersey division of College Hunks Hauling Junk. Tree Tavern Pizza. Yummy. They've supported us and Kumac ever all the way back to 
to the beginning. They are the greatest, and I say this not because they're a sponsor, but because I eat like two tree tavern people by myself a week. I'm addicted. Um, I almost feel like robbing Kumak to pay for my tree tavern peep to have it. But um, they are uh, tremendous. Tree Tavern Pizza, um, and Michael uh, Ryan, who owns that, supports us. He one at a time, one at a time. <laughs> DMC Athletics and Rehab. Our listeners and watchers know this. We've interviewed David Kunick before of uh, DMC. The DMC is a David M. Kunick. I don't know what the end. Would you remember what the end stood for, David? Uh, master, maybe? I forget. Yes. <laughs> El Maestro. <laughs> Maestro. But, uh, yeah, yeah, DMC yeah. Athletics. David Maestro Kunick. Great guy. Great guy. And he, uh, so we should actually on this put a link back to the interview that we did with him as well. And then, um, and they, by the way, they have locations in Randolph, Cedar Knolls, and Morristown if you're interested in DMC Athletics and Rehab. Prudential. There's an independent Prudential rep named Brad Bischoff, based in uh, Parsippany, who is supporting this event. And Lynn, you don't know this. We're going to do something special tonight. If people get a quote from this guy, if uh, Brad Bischoff, he, he will do it over the phone, but we're going to have people sign up, give him basically their name and phone number and address. He's going to call them up, set up a time, speak for 10 or 15 minutes on the phone, give them a quote or teach them a little bit about car safety, things like that on the phone. For every person who signs up with him just to get a quote, no obligation, it's totally free. Every person who he does that to, um, $10 goes to Kumac. Wow. That's so let's say somehow And will he be at the Chatham event? He's going to be at our event. He's going to have a table. We're also going to do a special thing at the event, and we're going to perform a song for him as well. But And I'm going to be out there help having getting people to sign up because basically if we could get his goal is to get a hundred people to sign up for these quotes that'd be a thousand bucks for Kumac right there wow so if just if you if you get to meet Brad make sure you ask him to throw powdered sugar on himself and make yeah. sure that because he has a really great bit that he does because he's really uh, heavily into the anti-texting and driving anti-distracted driving movement and he gave this really great uh, presentation a couple months ago and he had came with an arm sling and so the 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 power Sugar because it was like an airbag. It was a lot of fun. So. Yes. I'm glad you explained the powdered sugar connection because I was a little confused. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, nothing bad. And then um, we have one one more tiny little sponsor, um, but but not. not no it, such we, we sold a song sponsorship to uh, uh, our friend uh, Eric Spidel from IND, which is a uh, software and computer company also based in Morris County, New Jersey. Oh. Yeah. But he, and he helped out a lot, too, with, uh, with tweeting and sending emails out to the buddies, and that's what it's all about, really. Um, and, and you can explain this finally, Lynn, in terms of how do people find out about Kumac, what you do, what are some of the uh, forms of outreach that you do? Uh, obviously, events and things, but what else do you do to get people to know about you, and how can we get in touch with you if we want to volunteer yeah. and help you? You can find us on the web, Kumac Echo, C U M A C E C H O dot org. We're on Facebook, Facebook slash Kumac Feeds. We're on Twitter, Twitter slash Kumac Feeds. Um, we're on YouTube now. We have our first ever official um, Kumac video up on YouTube, and we're going to be getting some more content, can, content up there soon. Um, staff testimonials, client testimonials, so you can really see the work. Um, but honestly, the best way to learn about Kumac is to come on down. We're at 223 Ellison Street in Patterson, New Jersey. We love volunteers. Uh, we'll keep you busy, but you'll have fun. You'll get to meet our, our crew. Our staff is really uh, phenomenal. They're a fun group to work with. Um, and we'd, we'd love to work alongside of you. So come on down, help us bag up some food, learn about our programs. We'll give you a little tour, show you the lay of the land. Um, but please, yeah, connect to us. Um, all of our emails, you can find us on, on our website. You can find me, Lynn Brueger. It's just lbrueger at um, Give us a call. Shoot us an email. We'd be happy to see how you can connect with us. You know, we have people who connect with us in so many different ways. Dave came up with this 80s night idea all on his own. He reached out to us, and it has grown into one of our biggest events. So you never know how your talents might be able to support a mission like Kumax. David, one more, one more for Dave Phil here. No, 
Now, David, you ask your, your closing question. Lynn, uh, David asks a question every week to our guests. Uh, it's, it's a great closing question in which uh, it's very insightful and smart and brilliant. And David, give it up. Let's hear it. If a train leaves Los Angeles heading eastbound at 700 miles an hour, 472 people on the train. Dave, you're good at math, so you you, <laughs> right. you, you, you already impressed us. Now, the question I like to ask is, you've obviously done a lot. You've obviously learned a lot. What can you teach us? That a nugget of wisdom to help us move forward and 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 and, uh, and 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 improve our lives. Honestly, I, I think it, it's been said before, but it is so true that everyone can make a difference in this huge issue of hunger. I mean, that seven thousand people—that's just who we serve. The issue of hunger is gigantic and it is it makes no sense in this nation of plenty so every one of us really can do something you might think you're too busy or that you don't have enough resources yourself um, but you'd be wrong because even just volunteering one day or making one donation or simply telling people watching this video and telling your friends about Kumek and how big of an issue hunger still is in our community just helping to spread that word is critical because you know so many people don't realize that it is such a huge problem still um, so any little way that you can connect to our work makes a huge difference and you know you can do it in your own communities if you're not that close to us we want people everywhere to be fed so if you're watching this and you're in a different state or you're down in South Jersey you know just do a quick Google search find a pantry near you find another feeding program near you we just want to make sure that people get fed because, it, you know, that whole it goes back to Maslow's hierarchy. If people aren't even getting their basic needs met, how do you go beyond that and live a productive and you know life and contribute and be successful and happy? Um, so it all starts there. But every single one of you can can do something about it. That was excellent. Wonderful answer. You, you you speak very well, and I think everything you said was was right on. So. The Kumak, uh, beating people and changing lives, Lynn Brueger, thank you so much for spending. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And, and my pups. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the dogs. Oh. The best the part, part of this whole thing was the dogs. So yeah, the rest absolutely. Of, I've been bored for most of this, but that part, <laughs> I, you had me. You the best it. part was Dave's reaction to the dog yelping. That was the best yeah, part. Yeah, we're, we're going to need a freeze frame of that up on as your profile picture from now on. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Ah. Uh, all right, any last thoughts, Dave? No, I don't have any thoughts. I just want people to, to know about this, uh, to watch. Uh, I'm going to include a link on this to their, to their YouTube video that uh, Mike Doyle from Drive 80 Studios made. Uh, Lynn, we interviewed Mike Doyle on oh, hanging nice. out with David Plus Day before. Yeah, so um, Mike's a great guy, so I'm going to make sure uh, people see the video that Mike did for you guys because that really tells a great story in about two minutes and 29 seconds. So Absolutely. We will do that. And then um, if everybody can come out to Chatham or Red Bank, Red Bank April 27th, come on out, have a great time at 80s night, and um, contact Kumak and Lynn Brueger and see how you can do it. Great. Well, thank you, Lynn, for your time. This has been fantastic. Thank you, David. Thank you, Dave. And we're going to count at the count of one. I'm going to uh, end this. Lynn, you stay on because we're going to tell you about all the turtle wax that you win. Ready? 